at the wash table near 10X. For data sense northwest the money pit, we went to 150, 160 feet, if I remember correctly. Okay. Surveyor Steve Guptill and treasure hunter Michael John are sifting through the spoils from a borehole known as E5.25. Steve, yes. look, look at this. Oh, wow. You know what that looks like to me? I think that's a cannonball or yeah. a grape shot yeah. of some sort. So yeah, it, I don't know how old these can date. I know they can date old, but a grape shot or a small cannonball, that's about the size. That's right, yeah. A small cannonball or possibly grape shot? Used as artillery in both land-based and naval warfare dating back to the 15th century. Grape shot was made of materials such as metal, stone, or clay which were tightly packed into clusters and fired from cannons in order to cripple and sink warships on the high seas. Is it possible that Michael has now discovered a piece of artillery that may be connected to that very weapon and in a borehole that might also be near or even intersecting the original money pit? All right, prepare to astonish me. Here we go. <laughs> Arriving on the heels of this potentially important discovery, are Marty Lagina and archaeologist Dr. Aaron Taylor. What the hell is that? It's got an interesting weight to it, eh? Do you have any ideas? Um, right now, I'm not sure. Let's hear yours. Um, grape, grape shot, like some sort of um, weapon. Grape shot? Yeah. That, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so, too. You, you know what? You could be right. Maybe it is grape shot. I think it's a cool find. We need to get a lot of eyes on that. And somebody yep. might know what it is. When I see this little rock cannonball thing, I know immediately who needs to have a look at it. Gary needs to have a look at it. He's found such things before. And Laird needs to have a look at it. That's definitely worth collecting. I'll tell you what, even if it's nothing, I'll put it on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Later that afternoon, in the Oak Island Research Center. Hey, guys. Hey, Marty. OK. Marty Lagina meets up with Oak Island historian Doug Kroll, along with Gary Drayton and archaeologist Laird Niven to share the team's latest discovery. I, I still think this little artifact here, you guys haven't seen it yet, but I think it's something. Have you, have you seen this, Gary? I'm hoping that is something similar that I've recovered in England. Yes, it is. I was hoping that this stone was exactly like this. What is it? This is a dress stone or a gun stone. This is really, really old. This, this is a projectile, mate. Is Before it? Before the well, days of cannonballs, iron cannonballs. They called them dress stones because the guys were out looking for stones of a certain size. They become known as gun stones. Uh, but it's a projectile. It was fired out of a blunderbuss on an old ship. Yeah. Dating back to before the 17th century, a blunderbuss is a firearm with a short, large caliber barrel that featured a flared muzzle. Known as the predecessor to the modern shotgun, the blunderbuss was a single-shot weapon that utilized gunstones, iron musket balls, and other projectiles. Incredibly, it was also a type of weapon long associated with the pilgrims who founded the Plymouth Colony. Could this discovery actually be evidence that helps corroborate James McQuiston's theory of who might have been behind the Oak Island mystery? I get energized when they actually turn up something. Yeah, that's fantastic.